Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Amy Howard, and welcome to Finish Friday with Amy Howard at Home. We have an exciting segment for you today that's going to really make a big difference in how you look at your outdoor furniture. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that the one-step paint can be used outdoors. While it is a chalk-based paint, um, it can be used outdoors on things like cushions as well as your outdoor furniture. So all of us are getting outdoors. Um, I don't know about you guys, but the humidity in Memphis is way up today. Um, and it's, it's raining a little bit, but I love being outside in June, July, and August. Love it. Um, so I want to show you a problem that I had years ago um, that I saw was easily solved with our one-step paint. So come over here. I want to show you a cushion. This is real-life cushions, guys. So come over here. Now, many of you may say, oh, my gosh, this is what my cushions look like outside. How many times have we seen, if it's not a specialty fabric that was made for outdoor use, what happens? They get dirty, they get mildewy. Um, so let's just get a close up so that way you can see. And they just look kind of tattered after a while. And if you're like me, a lot of times you have specialty outdoor furniture that you can't find cushions to match it the size. So you need to be able to work with the cushions that you've got. That's the dilemma that I've had. So I wanted to show you the before, and now we're gonna come over here and I wanna show you an easy peasy way to be able to solve all those mildew cushions, um, things that you thought you were gonna have to throw away, even the outdoor furniture. You know, even being able to find outdoor furniture and repainting it is also very easy. So as I'm showing you the cushions today, know that you can use a secondary color, a bright color, um, to be able to actually paint the furniture frame itself. So here's a cushion that you see that's got a lot of coffee stains on it. Um, that is, uh, it's not necessarily set outside, but maybe it's seen better days. Maybe it's not quite as bad um, as this one. I'm gonna actually start with this one. But one thing I would like for you to look at is make sure when you're working with your cushions that you're going to be redoing, the firmer the cushion, the better it's going to do. The better it's going to perform when you're actually painting it. So as always, we try to put a little bundle together for you. One, because we want to have all the supplies together for you to be able to do a project like this, but also we want to be able to help you save a little money. So we put a bundle together today. I think it's $34.95. And you get your one-step paint in Bauhaus Buff, which is our number one selling color. It goes with everything. We've put your matte sealer together, as well as a small container of Clean Slate. So I'm going to show you how each of these products are going to be used. So if we're going to be painting our cushions, um, we're going to be using the Clean Slate first. Now, we'll tell you, a lot of you struggle, and I did. Jean was so upset because we had had these cushions. Uh, done and we thought that they were an outdoor fabric, but they weren't and so they mailed you the first year really really bad So um, I wasn't able to go in and really clean them like I wanted to so I thought you know what worst case scenario I'll paint them with the one-step paint because I wanted them in white I didn't really want them in another color and I would have had to have had brand new cushions made and so I painted them and they looked fantastic so a lot of people are thinking Wait a minute, this is a chalk based paint. It's not made necessarily to be able to go outdoors. It works beautifully outdoors, and I'm going to show you how to be able to do that. So, you can also do this on fabric indoors. Some people may say, um, Amy, you always talk about being a curbside shopper. I'm a curbside shopper. Um, can I paint fabric or upholstery? Absolutely. When we are painting fabric and upholstery pieces like this, and especially outdoor cushions, you want to make sure that you stay with fabrics that have low naps, low and almost no nap, like this. So when you've got linens, you've got um, cottons, there's no nap to it. When you get into velvets and mohairs, that's a nap. It's a thicker fabric. We want to stay away from velvets and mohairs. But most outdoor fabrics like this are going to be cotton or synthetic fabrics that are flat with no nap. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it. Now, what I don't want you to do is think that if you don't get it completely cleaned, that your project's already been a failure at that point. It's not. We're trying to get some of the residue off, and that's all we're doing. The other thing is, 
I wanted to put clean slate in this bundle because if you're painting your wood chair, if you're painting your metal chair, your plastic chair, which the one step will go on, I want you to clean slate it first before you paint it. So that way you've got it. I'm not as concerned uh, with you cleaning the cushions, but I want you to just kind of see. It's not going to get some of the deep stains out that are in there. We're not as concerned about that because why? We're going to paint directly on top of it. So I'm just going to continue. I want to go over this and just kind of wipe it down and let you see. Main thing again, I wanted you to have this clean slate in order to be able to clean the chair itself. So I just want to get my fabric clean. Now remember guys, it is um, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time in Memphis. If you are catching us live, please ask questions. Um, I've got some very willing and able people here holding these cameras that they want to be able to have it where we can answer questions for you. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our one-step paint and in Bauhaus Buff and we're going to shake it up. And I'm going to pour some, actually I'll just work out of the container itself. I'm going to take one of our synthetic brushes. Yes? Question from Emily. Okay. How long do you have to wait to paint before the clean slate is dry? All right, so great question. So this is Emily's question. Um, that how long do you have to wait for the one-step paint to dry, I mean the, the clean slate to dry before you put the one-step paint on? Um, allow it to air dry. You don't want to touch it and it be moist. You want to be able to allow it to be dry to the touch. So after about 15 or 20 minutes, you're just fine. So great question. All right. So I'm going to dip my brush into my one-step paint like this. Now, here's the other thing. Um, now, I just realized, and I apologize, I'm going to take some water. When you are painting upholstery like this, I want you to thin your paint. So I'm going to pour just a little bit of paint in here, and then I'm going to add about 20%. I want you to thin it down. Yes? This is from Kristen. Can you paint over old leather? Yes, you can paint over old leather. Mind blown. I know, a lot of people, it's like booyah. But you can also paint over vinyl. But here's the deal. If you're going to be painting vinyl or leather, I really would prefer that you spray it. I would prefer that you not brush it on. It's not going to be as smooth a surface. You can thin it down a little bit more and put on um, more thinner coats, and you should be okay. All right. So I've thinned this down about 20%. So you're going to have... Look at this. Look at this already. I want you to work again like in long clean strokes. It's best to not try to put it on too too thick in the beginning. I would rather you not have complete coverage because you're going to come back and do a second coat. Are, there, are, are we good on questions? I'm hoping that people are like mind blown. I can take my existing cushions and I can come back and totally transform them. Now something's gonna happen that you're gonna notice. This is gonna dry, I'm putting, uh, putting this on top of this fabric that normally is made to be able to go outside. It's gonna dry kind of rough. Now I'm gonna use the example um, when a man shaves his face and he puts on a shaving cream and it will kind of raise the fibers of the paint to where it's like raising the whiskers so the same thing, when you are putting this paint on top of this outdoor fabric like this, it's going to kind of raise the fibers just a little bit, and it's going to make it rough. So in this instance, it's going to be important that we do sand. Now, the only reason for that is, is where it kind of makes it softer for our next application of paint. Is everybody with me? Now, when you're working on a cushion that is tighter and the the foam core itself is a much thicker denser foam it's going to be even easier to paint um, but if you have cushions like this and you don't want to replace them it's so easy to be able to use the one step paint to go directly on top of it clean it with the clean slate first but it's not going to get completely clean and you can paint directly on top of the dirt um, as, as well as that you that if it's embedded in there or the stain um, Hopefully you're going to get most of the dirt off with the clean slate All right, so look how I'm working fairly quickly in long clean strokes I am not concerned about getting complete coverage this first time. Please don't load it up too too thick Let's get one nice thin coat on then we're going to allow it to dry 
and then we're going to put on a second coat. So I've got one over here. It's already done. Now, um, you see how the foam in this is just a little bit denser. Um, it's a little bit harder. Now, hopefully, you can hear this just a little bit. This has two coats on it. So I would like for you, after you put your first coat on, I want you to lightly sand it. Now, um, I'm okay with you using maybe a 220 sandpaper. Um, Jean, do you think they should go a little bit heavier grit? No, we're good with 220. Now, as you've brushed this, as a rule, I'll try to find a grain to it. So I want, on this back cushion, so which would be the back to a chair, I would like for you to brush from um, top to bottom all the way across. Is everybody with me? You don't want to go side to side and up and down. I want you to choose and create like a grain like we do when we're painting a piece of furniture. Go from top to bottom all the way across. Now, you're going to notice it's kind of hard. It's, it feels rough. So we're going to need to sand it. The only reason why we're sanding it is to get it smooth again. So hear that? That's kind of rough. Sorry for the noise, but I want you to be able to see this. So, now. I'm sanding in the same direction that I painted. You see about the size of the sandpaper that I'm using. So after, after I sand it, it's much smoother over here than it is over here. That way it gets it really nice and smooth and I have two options after I've done that. Am I okay on questions? Yes. If the cushions are clean already, do you need to use the clean slate? No, if the cushions are clean already, listen, if the cushions are clean already, you don't have to use a clean slate. The other thing is the reason why I put the clean slate in this bundle is because I want you to have the clean slate if you're gonna paint the chair. More than likely if you're painting the cushions, you've got a chair to paint. Um, or maybe you have a, a bench, maybe you have a picnic set, maybe you have something that you're going to be painting that's outside um, before you do that, not necessarily on the cushion if it's not dirty. I do want you to clean it with a clean slate. All right. I'm going to sand this just a little bit more. Now, I want to make sure that you dust it off really good. You're going to have some residue. And then, so you have two options. You can use, you can use this on the furniture or you can use this on the fabric itself, the cushions. You can use the matte sealer or you can use our Mind Your Own Beeswax. So a lot of you, you know that we live here in Memphis. It gets really, really hot in the summer. It gets upwards of 110 degrees. You can do this to an outdoor cushion and it's not gonna bother it. I don't want you to overload it. A lot of times when people are putting wax on with the brush, they put on way too much. Um, and I want you to shake this up really well because it doesn't take much at all. The only reason for the wax on this cushion is because it makes it soft and supple again. It makes it nice to be able to sit on. You don't want to be able to sit on it like this. And it gives it an emulsion to where, look at this. Look how easy this goes on. See how very little, you saw me just squirt out a little bit. I'm just going to put that on with a rag. And I'm going to buff it. Look at that. What's so cool about this is the fact that I can come back after I've painted this and I've put some wax on. There's not a whole lot. Um, I've not loaded it up. So, but after it's set there, after I've applied it for maybe 10 minutes, just come back with a dry, lint-free rag and just buff it. And you've got a really pretty, easy surface because here's the fun thing. Whether or not, look at that, whether or not I spill water on it, whether or not I've got a wet a wet child coming from a pool, whether or not I spill a drink on it. I'm just having too much fun here. Um, look at this. All you have to do is wipe it up. It's not going to affect your finish at all. It's not going to affect your cushion. It's not going to affect any of it. And you don't, there's so little wax on here, you don't have to worry about um, it melting. A lot of people think, well, if I put wax on it, is that not going to melt if it's out in the hot sun? Guys, we're only putting a very small amount down. What's the reason? After we've painted it, we've cleaned it, we've put two coats of the One Step on, and then we've sanded it in between. The only reason we're sanding, everybody's probably like, Amy, you always tell me we don't have to sand with the One Step. Yes. But the only reason we're sanding in this case is because when you paint the one step on top of an outdoor fabric cushion like this, um, it'll make it have a tendency to be like whiskers on a man's 
beard and it'll raise that up and make it kind of rough. So we just want to lightly sand it to make it smooth and put just a thin, thin coat of either the Mindrome beeswax or our second option on top of it. That way it's nice and sealed um, and you don't have to worry about what gets spilled on it. All right, so let me just show you. Here's another cushion. Here's another one that we had that I showed you as far as having coffee stains on it, um, where if once it's down and embedded in there, more than likely it's not gonna come off. So here's another option. We did a darker color. And you can come back. This has two coats of Atelier on it. And you can come back if you want and you can create stripes. So this is dried, I put two coats on it. It's completely dried. And I'm just gonna come in and do maybe a wide stripe all the way down the center of it on my back cushion and my base cushion to add a little bit of um, decoration to it. I like coming back and using some of my stencils from my Maker Studio to be able to um, monogram it. Come over here, I wanna show you really quickly just kind of the final result of what I'm getting ready to show you. So this was an old chair. Um, I had a pair of them that I bought and I lacquered these. I actually used my lacquer on the frame itself. I cleaned it with the clean slate and lacquered it. And then these cushions, they were a really ugly brown. This, is, this set's probably about three years old. And it's been used, and it still looks good like this. I haven't even cleaned it. But we painted this um, with a blue, with the one step, and then did just a light coating of wax on it. So you see it's protected, uh, but it doesn't have a lot of sheen to it. But then I just taped this off with just a regular painter's tape and used a secondary color. So you see the detail that that gave, and then I came back and just created a little monogram on here. These are darling. I got both of these chairs for like $10. So you can totally, if you need some outdoor chairs, don't spend a fortune. Grab somebody's on Craigslist or an, um, a neighborhood site, and you can totally redo them. Um, easy, easy. All right, so now, so I just wanna show you, like if you wanna be able to create a striped effect on your cushion that you've got, then this first coat was Atelier, and I'm gonna come back with one of our best-selling colors. It's called A Good Man Is Hard To Find. It's a dark, beautiful gray, and many of y'all know it's because my husband, Gene, has gray hair. I named this after him, and he's also a good man. That was hard to find. All right, so I'm just gonna come back. I see one thing I need to do. Now, once my, once my base is already painted, With two coats. It's probably only going to take one coat of a good man to be able to give me this beautiful little accent. So I'm just kind of protecting that pipe in there. Let me come back. What do we need to do? Come on over here, guys. I'm going to put a little bit of paint in. Always thin it. This paint is really thick. And I want to make sure that we're not working with it too, too thick. So thin it about 20%, stir it up really good. Again, if you're just now tuning in, we are painting outdoor cushions with the one-step paint. If they've gotten mildewed and ugly and dirty, it's don't throw them away. We can absolutely rescue them and restore them so we're redecorating. All right, so this has, this cushion, we've put the Atelier on two coats of it. We've lightly sanded it so it's really pretty. And look what I'm doing. I'm gonna make this adorable stripe. Guys, is this so fun? You can do the Bauhaus buff too and do a really pretty French blue stripe. But especially if you've got black outdoor furniture, it's great to have this gorgeous gray. This gray is so pretty against green shrubbery. Love this. Love, love, love this. You know, we shared a lot of pictures this week on Instagram and, and Facebook that were projects that our customers had done. And I am so inspired by our customers using our products on projects. If you are not part of our before and after group, please join it. We want to be able to see how you are using the products and it inspires all of us. So look how I'm just doing long, clean strokes. I want to make sure that I've got good coverage. 
Make sure too, when you're laying this tape down, you wanna burnish it really well. Uh, you wanna make sure that you burnish it so that way it doesn't bleed through. And then that way you can come back and you've got a beautiful stripe on your furniture. Um, and if you want to, you could come back and even put a cute little monogram in white on that. How cute is that gonna be? All right, so just remember, we've got the bundle this week that you can turn around and you can paint your cushions that you've got outside. You can also paint your outdoor furniture. Make sure you clean them good first, but we have options. Oh, I forgot, I forgot. Hold on just one second. There's something that I haven't shown you how to do yet. Let me take this off. I haven't shown you the sealer. I showed you how to be able to use the wax. So last but definitely not least, we also have a sealer that's a matte sealer that you can use for outside just to be able to protect the furniture or the cushions. If you want to have um, a more hardy sealing, this is a very easy product to put on. It's water base. It has no VOCs. And so I'm using a synthetic brush again. I'm just loading that up. And you'll see that beautiful matte smooth finish that I've got with the one step. I'm gonna come directly on top of it like this. It's gonna go on kind of milky white. So it's very easy to see, but it's gonna dry down to a beautiful finish. And one, one coat of this is gonna be perfectly all right. You just wanna make sure that you do it in long, clean strokes. Remember, always painting into a wet edge, load it up. And when you're painting things like this, try not to work out in the direct sun because it's gonna make it dry too quickly on you work in your garage or you can set up some paper and actually work in your kitchen or in a shaded area under a tree. Just make sure that it's not in the direct sunlight because it's gonna to dry too quickly on you. So this is gonna dry down to a more matte satin sheen, but it's gonna have uh, be great protection against the elements through the winter. You're gonna be able to let popsicle sticks and popsicles and ice cream get all over this and wipe it off beautifully where it'll be completely clean. So hopefully that's a great solution to a problem that we all have with outdoor furniture. Don't throw it away, don't sell it. Let's rescue, restore, and redecorate it. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody.